In this video, we're going to define what we mean by compounds, and then we're going to name some simple ionic compounds that contain two or three elements. Compounds are substances that are made from more than one element or more than one type of atom, which have been chemically combined or bonded together in fixed proportions. They can be represented by a chemical formula like H2O, which tells me that two hydrogen atoms have bonded with one oxygen atom, or CO2, which tells me that one carbon atom has bonded with two oxygen atoms. In this video, we're only going to look at a class of compounds called ionic compounds, which are made when a metal and a non-metal bond together. If you're not sure which of the elements you're looking at is the metal and which is the non-metal, look at your periodic table. Metals are found on the left of the table and non-metals are found on the right. To name the ionic compound, you first take the name of the metal and you don't need to change anything at all. That word is just the first word of the ionic compound name. For the second word, you take the first syllable, so the first sound in the non-metal element, and then you put the letters IDE on the end. So for instance, if iron reacts with chlorine, it makes iron chloride. Now watch out for that D. It's important that where we see IDE, that represents a compound, whereas the element is INE. Here are five examples for you to have a go at. In order to name these, you need to know which element each symbol represents. So you may need to use a periodic table to look this up. For instance, Na in question one represents sodium. Pause the video and write down what you think the name of each compound is. Hopefully that wasn't too tricky for you. So in the first element, we have sodium reacting with chlorine. Sodium is the metal and chlorine is the non-metal. So the compound is called sodium chloride. Then we have magnesium bromide, iron fluoride, lithium oxide and copper chloride. If you downloaded the worksheet, there are now some more examples that you can complete on that. Word equations are one way that we can represent chemical reactions that happen. On the left, we have the reactants, the chemicals that are going to react together. On the right, we have the products, whatever gets made. In between, you'll notice we have an arrow. It's not an equal sign because an equal sign means that the two sides are exactly the same as each other. And here they're not. Iron is a silvery metal, oxygen is a colourless gas and iron oxide is rust. So they're not the same as each other. But the iron and the oxygen react together to make the iron oxide. And that's what the arrow represents, reacts to form. Pause the video here and for each of the five questions, write down what the name of the product will be. Sodium reacts with oxygen. Sodium is the metal, so that goes first, and oxygen, we're going to take just the ox and put ide on the end, so we get sodium oxide. The second question is a little bit trickier because I've switched around the metal and the non-metal. Magnesium is on the left of the periodic table, so you know it's a metal, so that comes first, and we make magnesium chloride. Then we get tin sulfide, potassium oxide, and zinc bromide. Now you can have a go at the rest of the examples on the worksheet. There's also a straightforward way to name ionic compounds that contain three elements, as long as the third element is oxygen. Before, we had the name of the metal, the first syllable of the non-metal, and then ide. If we have a third element and that third element is oxygen, instead of ide, we're going to have eight. So here we have copper, sulphur and oxygen forming copper sulphate. Now you need to pause the video and write down what the names of these six compounds are. It's actually a little bit easier to do it from the symbols than from a word equation because in a symbol formula the metal always comes first. One thing I should say though is that the numbers in the symbol formula represent the number of atoms of each type and they're not going to affect the name. So you don't need to worry about them, just worry about which elements you have. So hopefully you managed to write down that the first one is calcium sulphate, then lithium sulphate, tin nitrate, potassium nitrate, magnesium phosphate, and barium phosphate. Now wait, there is one exception to this rule. We said that to name an ionic compound with three elements in it, you take the name of the metal, the first syllable of the non-metal, and then put eight on the end to show that it contains oxygen. But there is one exception. If that non-metal element is carbon, then you don't just take carb, you actually take carbon. So compounds that contain CO3 at the end are not called carbates, they're called carbonates. So for instance, 
copper, carbon and oxygen makes copper carbonate. So here are four final examples for you to pause the video and name before we finish. So hopefully you managed to work out that these are calcium carbonate, zinc carbonate, tin carbonate and lead carbonate. Thank you for watching and I hope you found that useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos coming soon.